Hello, I'm Lynn H. or Lynn Hirschberger from ColorJoy.com and I'm here to teach you how to do your swirl toe increase on the sock called the Crystal Socklet on Knitty.com in March of 2012. We're now just at the point where we left it after the second video for this sock and we're looking at the sock actually this is an upside down view although that is where we are this is the last stitch we knit and this is the bottom of the foot this is the top so if we do this we have now got a sock toe and we are working in the round okay so what we're going to do now is want to increase until this fits the foot that you desire it to fit there are sizes already specified in the pattern but you can also knit it until it is the right size for you. I am doing this demo in larger yarn and needles than are specified on Knitty so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. The first round we need to do, you may not have your stitches in this configuration at this point, uh, but we do need to have it in sections of seven. Um, and right now I have seven here, seven here, and I have 14 on this, which would be the top of the sock or all, it's called the instep. We are going to follow the instructions on, under swirl toe increase from Knitty. And I'm going to, one of the things that if you haven't done a lot of sock knitting or knitting in the round, if, if you have a tendency to want to see what you're doing and you knit here, then your yarn has to travel a lot farther between your two needles. So if you can get in the habit of taking the needle that you're not using and bringing it forward and knitting that first stitch here, that allows your stitches to be closer together right here. And if you tug on the first one a little bit and then tug on the second one a little bit, then those are really close and you're less likely to get what we call ladders, which are loose stitches between the needles. And uh, I knit a little bit odd here, but this is my, I am now knitting until there is one, I'm sorry, this one we're going to do the first round where we're going to knit seven and then either place a marker or have a gap between needles, however you like to configure your stitches. So you could put a marker there if you were doing a magic loop or uh, some other configuration. And after those seven we're going to do again, this is a rather odd thing, I'm looking at a monitor rather than my fingers, it's very odd. So I'm going to do seven and when I do, boy, it's really easy to not see what you're doing. There we go. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At this point, again, you can either switch needles or you can place a marker. And I have a marker that, that will work for me. I like the configuration of a triangle where one side is bigger. That lets me kind of at a glance know where I am in my circle. However, a lot of people enjoy having more needles. It makes it a little bit more uh, flexible to work with. And I, it's a very personal thing. It's like, which needles do you like? Everybody has really personal preferences and you just have to go with what you like the most. So again, we had seven, then we switched needles. We had seven, we placed a marker. I have seven more. And if there are stitches on a different side that you have to switch around to make this happen, that works. Again, I could place a marker, which is what it says in the knitty directions, or you can just have a gap between the two needles. Again, I'm bringing this one forward so that I can have that gap between the two needles very, very close together right here. And we won't have the ladder problem as much that way. And there we go. We've got now four sections with, in this case, seven stitches each. Bosnian toes have different com uh, combinations, but it's always in sections of four. And now what we're going to do, that was our little vacation round, so to speak. We just had to mark things, but we didn't do any increases or decreases or any other fancy work, just our markers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knit until there's one stitch left and then we're going to make an increase. And we're calling that increase a make one and there are actually a number of different techniques that all are called a make one. The, the really traditional folk 
style would be just to use what we used for our cast on, which is a backward loop, E-wrap, uh, half hitch, and use that increase as an increase rather than a cast on. But in the nitty uh, directions, they have their abbreviation make one to be a lifted increase between the stitches. So I'm going to knit all but one, and now we're at we're at the gap between the just before the the last stitch. Now what we want to do is take the left needle from the front to back, underneath this little strand that connected the stitches in the row below, and then we're going to knit this through the back loop. And how you do that is you insert your needle kind of so that the points are pointing towards each other, and you reach behind into the back there. You're going to wrap it, and a little bit like a purl, but in the back, you're going to then pull this stitch up, and now you have a twisted stitch on the row below. So it's a lot like that E-wrap, but you've created an E-wrap in the row below. That's a little bit tighter, it's a little bit more firm, and less likely to be a weak spot in your knitting if you do it this way rather than the E-wrap. Now we're going to do the final stitch. In this particular sock, I have designed it to have a swirl increase, or a swirl toe. And so the increases are all done at the end of the section. For a lot of western style socks, we decrease on the sides of the foot, and that's called a wedge increase, or a wedge toe shape. But in this case, we're going to do it at the end. So a lot of hats do it this way, not as many socks do. Okay, so we're at one stitch before the end of that section. Again, we're going to, can you see this little section right here? It's right between. We're going to take the left tip and we're going to go underneath that and lift it up so you can see sort of a, it looks like a yarn over there and a yarn over makes a hole if you don't twist it when you close it up when you work it. So we're going to go into the back of the loop so that we will actually twist that and not make a yarn over which would be a hole and we get to the marker. We just move the marker over, pretend it's not really there. Be careful though, you want it to be out of the way of your yarn. We have a tendency to want it out of the way of our eyes, and when we do that, there's a chance that you're gonna wrap a big fat loop around that marker when you don't want that. So you want to keep this out of the way of your yarn, not out of the way of your eyes. Okay, so we're gonna do the third section. And we're going to knit seven stitches. However you knit them is fine. I hold my yarn in my left hand at a very low profile. Again, we have one last stitch in that section, so I'm going to go from the front to the back underneath that little, and I have extremely pointy needles, so I have to aim very well. There we go, and I'm going to go in the back. Oh, this is not happy. Even instructors struggle sometimes. There we go. Go in the back. Oop. Well, well, well. You too can learn with the teacher. Do you see that I'm holding it with my thumb here? It's not cheating to use your fingernails or any of your fingers, whatever you need to do. There's my last stitch. And I'm going to hold the empty needle then in my right hand, go around counterclockwise. Knitting is always counterclockwise. We even wrap our stitches counterclockwise. If you pay attention to looking straight down, you always wrap it counterclockwise. Although these days we don't have clocks with hands. It's a little harder to imagine that technique. And one more. Let's get this guy out of the way. We have this lovely little strand right here. I can see it really well here. I didn't see it so well on that corner the last one, from the front to the back, and then I'm going to put this lovely little tiny needle point in the back, and there we are. We have now done one of our increase rounds, and they were increased the stitch right before the last stitch of each section. So now I, all of my sections have eight stitches in them instead of all of them having seven. And all of them were increased at the end. This will make it so that the toe on your sock will actually sometimes be at a funny angle. And that's just a typical thing that happens with this sort of increase. 
it's a swirl toe and it swirls that little square you made at the very beginning. So this is how you're doing it. You're just now going to do a plain round, which we call a vacation round. Just go all the way around and do all your knitting. Then you're going to do an increase round and then you're going to do a plain vacation round and an increase round and a plain vacation round until you either reach the number of stitches that I've specified in the pattern, assuming that you're using the same gauge that I have, or a real folk way to do it is you want to get your stitches nice and loose on these needles. And if you have a sock around your house that fits you really well, that is about the same thickness of fabric as what you have here, I've got what um, a, a little chippy sock, which is another design I have, a toddler sock. And if I wanted this, to, it, this new sock to match that, then I would just put it next to each other until I got the right width for that sock. Now it does matter what size fabric you have. If you have a thin sock, it can be smaller because it doesn't have that extra thickness around your foot. Just like you can't fit it in a a shoe as easily with a fatter sock. So this one though, this is DK weight yarn and DK weight yarn. And if I want to make a sock that matches this for the same ch child who fits it well, then I'm probably gonna have one more round of increases, don't you think? Something like that. And then I can just stop based on what I can see works for me. And I don't have to worry about uh, the exactness of it. When you're in doubt though, unless you're working for a child, you would rather have a sock a little bit small rather than a little bit big. We have a tendency to round up just in case and that works better for sweaters than it does for socks. Socks do not want to be wrinkled up in your in your shoe. So when in doubt, go a little smaller. Uh, I like to go anywhere from 10 to 20% smaller than my foot in order to do it. So I hope this was enlightening for you. I'm gonna have another video I'm going to keep on increasing this while I'm off the camera, and then I'm going to show you how to do some color work for the, the, the color work zigzag portion of this sock. Thank you for tuning in with me. I'm very glad you're here. My name again is Lynn H. or Lynn Hirschberger from colorjoy.com. Thank you for joining me.